welcome back to Hunter the Vigil Summons here on Dork Tales. I'm your storyteller, Kelly. I'm using him as my pronouns, and I'm very excited to be here tonight as we continue this legal drama after many months off. Um, the last time we recorded was in August, we just checked. Uh, so it is fantastic to be jumping in to this uh, protracted legal case. Uh, before we begin, we are going to introduce the cast here. Uh, so cast, please introduce yourselves and tell me what your aspirations are for the night. Starting with Robin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robin. I use she, her pronouns, uh, as does Lillian, our Lucifuge lawyer. And uh, tonight, her aspirations, well, I guess not not tonight. We're recording in the night, so I'm so used to saying tonight. Uh, today, this session, her aspirations are to make peace with the news of her grandfather is dying, uh, to get in a fight, and to continue to find a lead. Because she has not found one. There have been leads found, but I want her to find a lead in the case. All right. Sounds good. Uh, next to you, I've got Kel. Well, hey, it's Kel from up the road. Um, I'm going to say it's it, it's night because if you're not watching this at night, you're doing it wrong. This That's the best time to be watching this. Turn the lights down. Pull the blinds. You know, like, do it at Make night. it a sexy occasion. Anyways, it is really come on it is so i am happily playing elena ekstrom the poker-faced fbi profiler of the vascu and uh she i use she her pronouns so does alina and alina's aspirations uh because i only checked one off the last time uh the long-term one mm -hmm. which is really long term it's probably going to be full arc uh not just is um is our architect not just is our architect actually possessed, but what's going on? She really wants to find out what the whole, what's at the kernel of this whole event. What's Discover happening? The what's the deal? Discover right. the truth. The truth is out there, right? I mean, I'm I'm the big X Files fan here. Mm -hmm. And short term, uh, I also needed to check on uh, the inform information that uh, uh, Alina's uh, mentor uh, gave her, and. Mm -hmm. I think the next short term is going to be uh, well, I, she's always looking for a new, a new source of information. So I think it's, that's kind of the continual. What's the next step? So what's the next source? Okay. Sounds so, good. Yeah. All I mean, right. It's a, it's a police procedural. It's a police procedural. procedure. All right. And last but not least, we've got Trizelta. Oh, hi, I am Traz. I use he, him pronouns, as is my character, Alexander Landry, the rookie task force Valkyrie member. Uh, let's see. His long-term aspiration is find the identity of his parents' killer. And his two short terms right now is find a way to deal with the crappy photographer, Damien Weiss, and keep an eye out for any more leaks at the station because too much information has been getting out. Do with photographer. Place is a sieve. Uh, leak hunting. All right. Just like a far-fetched, you're looking for that leak. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, folks, do you have any questions? It's been a while since we've recorded. So, uh, a reminder that you all are doing your best to... Uh, solve the mystery surrounding the mass murders committed by one Bryce Lewis Hicks, a serial killer turned, well, an architect turned serial killer. Wouldn't that be an ironic turn of events if it was the other way around? And he was a serial killer that just became an architect and settled down. Um, you know, sometimes that happens. You know, they, they, they move on. They yeah, change like, careers. They change careers. Kel's a yeah. criminologist. That's yeah. good. Um, <laughs> and uh, you found a bunch of leads. You've been investigating this and have been united on a task force uh, inside of the Vancouver PD that is investigating this crime, uh, collaborating between both uh, the PD department, uh, which is Officer Landry's job, with uh, a consulting agent from Vascu, which is Alina, and then uh, legal which is in the form of Lillian Underhill, who is representing the law firm of... Do you have it off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head, but if Fabro, I... Uh... Sax, and Rom. Oh, I was right. going to say Satan, Satan, and Satan. I mean, John Fabro's not I mean... Satan. Oh, no, I guess he's not. He's a chef. So only two Satans, that's fine. Only two Satans. <laughs> Satan, Satan, and Favreau? Sa Satan, Satan, and Favreau. Yeah. Satan, Satan, and 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 uh, yeah, that's all I got. All right, so it's so, like six six four neighbor of the six, beast. Six six four, yeah, the the neighbor the of the beast. 
Yeah, 665 is the across the street neighbor of the beast. Yeah. 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 This is like this the next door. Kitty, kitty corner? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's hop into Hunter the Vigil Summons here on Dork Tales. <clears throat> Last time on Hunter the Vigil, Lillian, you sat down for a lunch meal with your grandfather, Simon Underhill. For all intents and purposes, he's played by Ian McKellen in this film. And as he sits across the table from you, having a glass of wine, you almost choke as you take a sip. And he says, by the way, I'm dying. What? Mm, dear, you're dribbling a bit. Yes, dying. Um, soon to be in repose. What? What ha happened this sudden? Aggressive small cell cancer in the lungs. Not a big deal. And as he's saying this, the waitress comes and... I'm sorry, do you need any more time with the menu? No, I'm good to go. Lillian? Um... Yeah. Um... Fine. <laughs> good. Uh, so, I will be having, and he orders for you. And... Super salad, pet. S salad. S salad. Dressing on the side for both. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> um, yes. Uh, small cell carcinoma inside of um, both of my lungs. There, there's got to be something we can do. There's, there's clinical trials happening all over the place. I'm, I'm sure we can find the best doctors. If you don't think fix... that my money can find the best law, the best doctors, then you're mistaken. I'm stage four. I'm practically stage five. William takes a huge sip of wine. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite have the wine glass, but she's like. I'm not pleased about How this. How long? Mm, they say months. They, it's they been a good run. Yet. I'm only... Hmm. I was hoping to see 80. But I suppose you can't always get what you want. Hmm. No. Unless... Well, whatever you need, I, I'm here for you. Do you mean that? Of course. You practically raised me. You're more than my father than my father was. Hmm. That's lovely to hear. Because he smiles and leans over his hand sliding across the table to rest on your forearm. I was wondering if there wasn't something that could be done to help me. Tell me about this case that you're working, he says with a smile. And as he says that, we are going to cut scene and switch over. It is midday right now inside of the precinct. Alex, you are practically on a war path, looking for leaks, tearing things up. You were going to have to deal with the photographer. How would you go about doing this? You'd have to get more information about what he does in his daily day. 
why don't you go ahead and make me, I want you to make me an extended roll. Uh, it's gonna take two hours of your day each roll, and it's going to be a, a wits and investigation roll. Red, do tens explode in the system? Tens explode in the system unless they have a reason not to. So two successes to start. Two successes, all right. So I want you to keep going. So two hours today have been spent just trying to track his movements for this police photographer. Okay. Same roll again? again. Same roll again if you want to spend more time doing it, yeah. Yeah. That's only one this time. <laughs> okay. So you are basically finding that he does the crime scene photog photography that is required. Uh, and um, as you are investigating him, you're getting a bit of a sense of like his movements, his, his general day-to-day -day life, his office, you know, things that he spends his time doing. Um, and as you are doing that, you're going to hear that he's been called out that day. Uh, there has been a, um, a homicide downtown at a, um, at a cafe. A couple of guys got into a fight and one of them stabbed the other to death with a broken salt shaker. The guys around the precinct are laughing their asses off about it and saying that it was a, it was a murderous assault. Prone. <laughs> oh, come on, man. You got to admit. Guy leans in this uh, rather square jawed, curly, blonde haired homicide cop um, named um, uh, named Derek Knight is going to lean and kind of nudge you. Come on. That's a pretty good joke. Uh, needs a little bit more seasoning. <laughs> Oh, look at this guy peppering us with his witticisms. <laughs> Why you seem so interested in this? Eh, no, I gotta find a way to kill some time. Some lull between the case I'm working on here and there. Yeah, what's going on with that anyway? Um, afraid I have to keep that to myself for now. Oh, come on. Look, we all got a bet going, actually. Do you think he's actually, you know, crazy? Or do you think he's, um, you know, actually possessed? Does he actually think it? I guess, I mean, he's obviously not possessed, but do, does he think he is? Or is he just, is he is he crazy or is he faking? Ah, you know how these guys are, fake it so they can... So they can get off? Of course. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I heard some weird stuff about him being in the holding cells, though. Yeah, he just blabbers himself or not. Don't don't look too much into it. Okay, sounds good. Well, I gotta go um, take a look at this assault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me know how that goes. Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh. It's definitely going to be a scene to raise my, my blood pressure. You know, because of the... Yeah, anyway. Uh, I'll see you later, mm. man. Take care. Later. He smiles, gives you a little whack on the arm as he passes. And you can see your target grab his equipment and head out. Across the precinct. What do you do? Do you want to try to come up uh, with a way to, to go along with him to the scene? Do you want to keep working, doing casework? What do you want to do? I think I'll work casework a little bit, but then he'll go to the scene later, just as, like he's on break, and check it out. Hmm. Okay. All right. So um, what I want you to do is just to do some generalized police work. Let's see how the rest of your day goes. Make me a resolve plus investigation roll. Hey. Uh, one success. One success. It is you are working out of the back office that has been assigned to you by Silva. And the day is going to drain past. Cup after cup of bad station coffee is starting to eat away at your gut. And you're just looking at witness statements. You're looking at just various, you know, 
crime scene photos that you can't help but be drawn back to the target of your ire every time you look at these photos. The perverse arrangement of bodies, the, the saturation of the blood staining that bright carpet. After a point, he's just going to take a break from it. <laughs> okay. And as you go, do you go take a break out? Do you, um... Yeah, he goes out and goes out to where that cafe where the scene is and see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> as you are headed outside of the precinct, um, a man is going to stand up as you are headed out the front door, sitting out there on like the the waiting benches to go see the the booking officer and and so on, um, a man's going to stand up. He's probably about 40, 45 years old. Um, his face is a little soft, um, not unhandsome. I'd say if I had to cast him as an actor, it would be probably like uh, Wilson from House. You know, sure. Sean, not Sean William Scott. That's a different guy, but uh, Sean Robert Leonard. I know who you're talking about, but I don't know. You know who I'm that talking that about. Name. Basically, he's got that kind of Samwise Gamgee type of face, right? Yeah. You know what? He's Robert now... Robert Sean Leonard. Robert Sean Leonard. Thank you. I had the names almost. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Yeah. So basically... Um, yeah. Right names, actually. wrong order. Yep. So chocolate eyes, brown hair kind of swooped over in that like kind of boyish 1990s um, like uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas style that never goes out of style for some guys. Um stands up and approaches you. He's wearing all black, and um, can you make me a wits and empathy roll as he's approaching you? Empathy? Or a wits and composure roll. Your your choice. Different information, though. Okay. I can do wits and empathy. Okay. That would be no successes, and I also rolled a one. <laughs> oh, no, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter in Chronicles. Okay. He Couldn't stands you. up and and brushes some of the um, some of the wrinkles out of the front of his um, his black shirt and pants. He's wearing an overcoat that he kind of um, he sloughs back up, and uh, will take a step for you forward and say, um, "Excuse me, uh, are you are you Officer Landry?" Mm, yes, then you are so, uh, Alan Thorne, Father Alan Thorne. I just wanted to check in. I'm sorry if this is um, probably weird, but I've been reading the papers. I saw what is happening with your case. The you were the officer on the scene. Yeah. Uh, listen, um, this is going to be strange, but if there's anything I can do for you, um, here. He'll reach into his pocket, draw a business card, slightly bent, and hand it to you. Father Alan Thorne. Uh, and uh, he is a priest of, uh, of St. Andrew's. I just kind of look at the car, kind of look it over. Um, all right, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. Are you, um, are you religious, Officer Landry? Do you have faith? Not particular. Not particularly. No. Uh, well, just remember that he has faith in you. Anyway, sorry, sorry for taking your time. Yeah, perfectly right, Ad. You have yourself a good day, all right? Um, you as well. And uh, do you just leave? You head out to. Uh... Yep, he'll put the card in his pocket and leave. <laughs> Sounds good. 
All right. Heading to the point of the assault. It is a little cafe called Gregor's Cafe down on Main. And um, it, in fact, is more of a... Honestly, it's about the size of like a walk-in like pizza slice place. There's four tables in the place. And it's mostly, like, it's a cafe, but it's mostly a deli. A little bit of outside seating there. The old rickety iron type of seats that are under an awning that hasn't been changed in 40 years. The stripes are yellow and red and are completely bleached out, almost gray by constant sun and erosion from the rain. For once, it's not raining. Although, this... The sky overhead is gray and threatening. And as you approach, you can see that there's a little bit of tape out front. A uniform is blocking entry to anybody who doesn't need to be there, but there are plenty of rubberneckers who are walking by, stretching to look inside. Uh, Officer Knight is there. Inspector Knight is taking a look around and uh, is doing that thing that he shouldn't be doing, but they do in all the shows where he's like picking up things with a pen. You know, you know, just contaminating evidence as you do. Um, yep. Yeah, he's wearing gloves at least. Uh, so as he is doing that, you're going to see that it looks like um, looks like a pair of. Well, it looks like uh, you're going to see that there is a a man on the ground, uh, kind of a slightly dusty complexion, uh, Middle Eastern of some kind, maybe, maybe Iraq, Iraqi or Iranian. Um, and, uh, nearby you can see a police car with a, a rather burly white guy shoved into the back. Uh, tattoos all around his neck and face. Ah, look who made it! Knight says, looking up. So yeah, you'll never believe this one. What, what brings you out here, though? You just had to get a look at this? Yeah, the story sounded too ridiculous. Okay, check this shit happened? out. Uh, this, hold on. Hey, are we good? Yo, camera guy. He points at your target. Uh, yeah, we're, we're probably good. I've got all the photos I need. Perfect. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move the body. Because you gotta see this shit. Alright. He leans down, wedges one of his uh, wingtips beneath this man's shoulder. The guy's laying partially face down. And rolls him onto his back. And you are going to see this man who's maybe, maybe 30 years old? Maybe 35 years old? Kind of, he's, he's uh, skinny fat. Jowls hanging off of an otherwise rectangular face. As he rolls back, his head is going to lop to the side slightly, and you'll see that a small salt shaker, the kind that you see in a diner, the really tapered ones, has been jammed into his eye socket. All the way to the flare at the bottom of it. Blood has congealed around it, as well as has bits of um, salt crystals that have like formed around the wound. That big guy over there, like the fucking tattooed Hulk in the back seat. Took the guy's salt. He was being a, a rowdy asshole. He was talking on his phone, right? The, the big guy. Um, he was talking on his phone on speaker mode, being a real dickhead. Oh God. Went to grab the guy's salt apparently this guy thought it would be funny if he did the the old salt shaker twist off you know where you remove mm -hmm. it and then it all dumps guy ended up dumping uh, about half a shaker of salt all over his food he flipped out and uh well gave him an eyeful rather excessive little bit little bit We booked this guy before? No. No, he's probably like American or something. He's got no record though. Oh, good. No ID. I mean, honestly, 
hell, there's a good chance he's probably like a hell's angel or something like that. He's wearing leathers. But no markings. At least not in anything I can read. Just come up here and cause trouble then, huh? Yeah, no, this is going to keep me up for a while. <sighs> and as you are doing that, there's going to be a flash of light as your photographer friend takes a photo of the two of you examining the crime scene. For posterity. Uh-huh. Thought you said you were done with your photos. <laughs> you guys looked like, uh, like TV cops. I couldn't help myself. Hey. Next time, get my good side. <laughs> so. What do you make of this? Hmm? You think the story's right? Do you think it was, like, gangland thing? Do you think... I don't know. This guy is, uh... He's a grad student from Iran. I think the guy in the car is just an asshole. <laughs> Fair. Well, uh, I'm going to keep poking around. If you want to take a look around, go ahead. All right, thanks. But I think you got this one. This very weird. Sure, sounds good. Do you want to make me a wits and composure roll at a minus three? Oh. Because you're actively not looking for things. I just want to see if your detective senses will pick up on something. Minus three. Uh, and that's minus three dice, right? Minus three dice, yes. No, there's wits and what? Wits and composure, two attributes. And composure. Oh. Just with duh. <laughs> Look at the wrong side. All right. <laughs> I went that way. Uh, one success. One success. Glancing around, you are going to notice something as you stand up and turn. Over at the... There are a couple of overturned tables from this incident. There's only four tables in the place. One is next to the dead man. And the other is at the wall. There's old, um, old tiling on the wall, like white with the grout that's been completely graffitied in, almost like a men's room. You know? Um, mm. And as you glance over, you're going to notice that there are some rents in the side of the wall, right, right there where um, the table would have been. And they look fresh enough that like the break in the wall has like little crumbly bits of tile and plaster still hey knight did you notice this hmm oh yeah where the table fucked up the wall yeah I, yeah but this is recent well yeah this is recent it looks like I think he just slammed the table into the wall man like what do you expect it was a fight well not much of a fight Is what happens when eggheads pick fights with uh, with psychos. That rips tables out of the wall? I mean, it wasn't bolted down. Like, these are, like, big, heavy, like, shitty tables from, like, what, the 80s? I don't know how this place even stays in business. You see the, uh, the, the, the health grade in the window? That bad, huh? <laughs> hey, let's see. You know, C's get degrees, or right? I don't know. Ask this guy. Do you uh, want to go in? I wonder if it was more than just. Hmm? You want? What are you saying? Sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, no problem. I just wonder if it's just as simple as it's being made out to be. So as you're saying that, do you want to look around a little bit, or do you think he's got Assuming... it? Assuming. Is Damien still lurking around? <laughs> uh yeah. Uh he's outside. As long as he's right still. Now. He'll look a little bit longer, but keep an eye on Damien uh, when he gets ready to leave, then he'll probably take it off with him. Okay. So you kind of just let it go, and uh, you see Damien head out and uh, start making his way toward his car. 
do you fade? Hey, Damien, hold up. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, Landry, how's it going? Look, if uh, not if, bad. Just you want to see the picture? You look pretty good. You look like you've been working out, man. Hmm. Huh, thanks. But no, I wanted to I wanted to talk to you in private for a minute. Uh, there's an alley around the corner. I mean, it's Vancouver. There's alleys everywhere. How else would the the CW survive? You know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sure. What's <laughs> up, man? So once they're around the alley, he's sure. going to shove them right into the wall. Okay. What? What the fuck? I know what the fuck you've been doing. I know all the little pictures you've been taking and selling. Man, I haven't sold. Uh, uh, look, okay, it was an accident. I didn't mean to catch her there. Okay, I can delete it. I I can delete it. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. You're just you're just protecting her. So you know, I I wasn't gonna do anything with it. Okay. I don't know how you 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 heard about that shit, but like, look, what what your partner does is her business. My partner? Oh fuck! Look, I I'm gonna pull I, the gun and pull it right under his chin. Oh shit! Oh sh! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Look, better start fucking talking. This is really this is. Really illegal. This is really Shows illegal. what you're doing. I can turn your ass in. So f start fucking talking. I, last night, I caught your partner. Or t two nights ago. Fuck, 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 fuck. I caught... I, I caught Michelle buying some prescriptions she was buying oxy from a dealer I know oh so you're in the same circles then I I'm a no I'm a I, I have CIs man like I I know people they they tip me off on shit I'll be sure to check on her you delete that shit all your other photos, and if you're smart, you'll keep quiet and fucking resign. Make me a uh, presence and intimidation roll at a plus three. The gun's gonna be also, able to give you a plus two bonus, but yeah. Go, Alex. I'm gonna use Fuck to, love push. this. That sounds great. What's your vice, by the way? Is it wrath? I never knew Traz could get mad. It is, um... Yep, it's wrath. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's wrath. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, just this is a free willpower for you. You're gonna regenerate it at the end of the scene anyway, so because you earned it. All right, cool. That is perfect. Holy shit! So two successes could have been better. Two <laughs> successes. All right, he's yeah, yeah, man. This job isn't worth my life. Keep quiet. Got me. I, I, yeah, y y yes, sir. That's what I like to hear. Put the gun away. Ah! Gun on the shoulder. <sighs> Have yourself a good day. All right. All right. And as you turn the corner, you'll feel the first drops of rain beginning to fall. You're going to feel like that could have gone real bad, but you're feeling real good about it regenerate that willpower um and um as the rain starts to fall and you round the corner you are going to hear hey what the fuck night night and uh the uniform is freaking out the squad car that the perp is burke is booked into the back doors wide open the streets are hey. Yeah, the back door's wide like open. Corn? <laughs> no, it's just open. Ooh. And um do you wanna do you wanna take a look around and see if you can notice anything in the crowd? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Make, make me a wits and composure roll, please. Alright. Two 
Two successes. Two successes. All right. So glancing around, there are only a about 50 people on the street as far as you can see. Now, if down on Vancouver Main Street, if you're standing on Main Street before it actually hits a hill, you can see, oh God, like six blocks in either direction. Like it's a really just long straight street. And looking around, you can see tons of people. Nobody is going faster than a quick walk, like a, like a city walk. And glancing around the street, you're seeing like cars are passing and you know, people are doing their midday lunch runs and merges and glancing around. This officer is freaking out. Uh, Knight runs out of the um, out of the cafe and is like, what the hell happened? I don't know. The, the door was just open. I turned my back for a second. We can't be far. He was wearing cuffs, right? You had him cuffed in. Yeah, the, the cuffs are open. He reaches into the back and pulls out a pair of cuffs, both of which are wide open. And as Landry's looking around, he's going to notice just one thing. Across the street, across all the traffic, inside of a little, not even an alley, but more like a gutter between two buildings, you are going to see a large husky dog looking back at you. Its mouth closed, its eyes bright and then it almost seems to smile before it lops back behind the building Landry I need you to help me secure these streets these gotta be around here somewhere yeah yeah I, I got, I'll help yeah where do you want me yeah, you go that way, just, and, uh, do you have your radio on you? Yeah. Okay, get on the radio, put an APB out for this guy. They've, they've got photos in right now, so, hey, did you send those photos in? And he's gonna start trying to organize a, a search with the few cops he's got there. But, uh, strangely, Damien, when he turns to point at Damien, is nowhere to be found. He's made himself pretty scarce. And the hunt begins. Meanwhile, across town, what's Alina doing for today? Uh, all depends. Am I now last? Mm -hmm. Last we left everybody, was she still uh, beat the hell up <laughs> from her from her poking the bear? From her poking, <laughs> poking the bear, the demon. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're still. Uh, how many? How many damage do you have on you? Uh, let's see. Okay, so I. Oh, how many points? How many points did I take? I took a. You took a lethal. I took about. Oh, I took a lethal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so lethal takes at least a day of bed rest to heal. Yeah, I wrote mm. down one point every two days for about a. And I also wrote down one bashing, although I don't know what that means. One bashing heals in I had about cracked an hour. ribs. Yeah. So ba oh, the bashing okay. heals in about an hour. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I had seriously cracked ribs. Okay. Uh, so you might Lots be taking ribs. you might be taking the day off then to recuperate, or do you think that but she I... would try to pull through, or go see a doctor? Uh, she probably, I mean, she knows it's cracked ribs, so it's, there's not much doctor's going to do except say, you know, here, take some take some painkillers. Don't move so much, you know. <laughs> Breathe mean, you could carefully. Be, you could be going to get those painkillers. Yeah, probably doing that. All right, so, so uh, we are going to cut to the inside of a clinic where a, uh, a doctor is going to enter. He's um, kind of kind of lantern-jawed. He's, he's played by Nathan Fillion in the film. All right, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Ekstrom. Uh, just, just Ms. Alina. Oh, it's fine. Apologies. Thanks. Um, I don't have much of your all medical good. records because you're coming up from the states. Um, you got good insurance mm -hmm. though, so hey, this is all covered. Welcome yeah. to socialized medicine. Yeah, well, you know the FBI seems to be a little bit uh, more progressive on that than some other departments. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah. Is it a exciting line of work? Apparently. Uh, it's not supposed to be, uh, generally. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. 
uh, TV wise well, to you. <laughs> uh, can I get you to remove your shirt, please? Let's take a look at it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you slide your shirt off, and it is a difficult process getting it over your back and yeah. ribs. Even mm -hmm. the um, the even the pressure of the cloth sliding across your ribs is yeah. like agony. Oh, that's some extensive bruising around here. So what exactly yeah, happened? I... You got in a you got in a fight? Uh, yeah, interviewing uh, interviewing a, a person of interest and uh, mm -hmm. kind of took it the wrong way. Let's say that the uh, the the table he tried to shove the table uh, into the wall through me. I was about to say, do you think he seemed to want to introduce it to your to your internal organs? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Well, don't worry, we'll get you all fixed up. I can't do much for the broken ribs. I mean, that's obviously yeah. cracked. Um, I'm going to get you in for an X-ray just to make sure that it's not. You don't have any bits broken off or puncturing anything mm. internal. You haven't had any uh, blood in your stool, and you haven't been coughing up blood or anything like that? Nothing in your sputum? No. Sputum? No. I never can remember how to... Years in med school, I can never pronounce the word. Uh, so, uh, it's sputum. Because you're sputing it. That's right. Okay. Uh, well, um, do you have any allergies uh, to medication? Uh, no, no. All right. Well, I got some good news and some bad news for you. Hmm. This is going to take a little bit of time to heal. The best that I can suggest is that we get some, well, we get some bandaging on it, some medical tape to kind of just hold everything in place. Um, if you're capable of doing it yourself, I can get some of that for you pretty easily. Uh, but you might want to get a friend. Sure. Do you have any friends in the city that you feel comfortable? Um, uh, I mean, I'm working through the. Uh through the uh, VPD, so I'm, I'm sure they've got, uh, you know, Perfect. can it's, find it's, a medic on site. Basically, you're going to want to, uh, you're going to want to make sure that it's nice, tight, and bandaged. Uh, you want to uh, try to limit your emotion as much as you can, and um, you are not going to want to drive because I'm going mm. to be prescribing you some hefty narcotics. Okay. Uh... What about so, like just some Tylenol or Advil to just kind of? You can absolutely do that, but uh, sleeping is going to yeah. be a nightmare for you. Yeah. What I would recommend yeah, is that's... is a light opiate. Um, I, I'm thinking that I'd like to give you some tramadol. It's it's one of the lighter ones that I can prescribe yeah. you. Um, it's less habit forming. I don't want to say that it's not habit forming because, uh, as we all know, um. I mean, we're in a crisis right now. Yeah. Uh, that said, I'm not going to give you anything like like Oxy or um, mm. anything that could be I, particularly yeah. habit forming. Uh, the worst problem I that you're going to have with didn't want it. Good, good. That's yeah. great. Uh, the worst thing that you're going to have with uh, with tramadol is occasional trouble with bowel movements. So, uh, I would suggest taking your tramadol along with a fiber supplement just to make sure that everything goes through and keep yourself hydrated. Uh, beyond that, uh, we'll yeah. get you into X-ray and um, try not to pick any fights with dump trucks. I think the dump truck would have been a smarter bet. <laughs> hmm. I like you. You're good. Uh, the FBI, though. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny all the way up here. Uh, sometimes there's a. Uh you know they want sometimes they just want you know another set of eyes you know somebody hmm. who's done the profiling thing so i've been up here a couple of times so relationship well, with vpd and yeah is this uh if, look you don't have to tell me because i know it's probably off the record but is this about the um serial killer uh i think the way they word it at the VPD is uh, I can't comment on an ongoing investigation. Fair, fair. Yeah. Um, I. Uh... You're 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 smart enough to know why profilers <laughs> might come up to Vancouver, though. That so. yeah, that's true. Uh, well, if uh, if you ever need to talk about anything. Um, 
Look, my name's, um, if you look up my name, Michael Renfro. Uh, Doctor, is this moving into possibly a social diversion? Uh, just because your shirt's off? <laughs> you can put that back on, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. I might need a, now, okay, I might need a hand with that, to be honest. Okay, uh, was, I would like, absolutely. Held a... Sure, I can. Yeah, absolutely it was like have... hell to put this on in the first place. <laughs> okay, well, at least we didn't have to cut it off. You, all right? Put your hands up. <laughs> Funny, usually it's you that says that. I can't, I can't raise my arms. Okay, so and he's gonna try. He's gonna help you put it back on. It's it'll be a button up shirt, by the way. Okay, uh, so he'll it, he'll help you shrug yeah, it back on. There's no help. way that she's gonna be pulling anything over. So he'll I mean, he'll start buttoning up the front of your shirt. Wrapping up in a blanket and showing up. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> probably shouldn't. I'll, I'll leave that one on you. Thanks. No problem. No, what I mean is, um, um, <laughs> oh, you've got me flustered. Say it. I'm not offended. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it wouldn't be the first time I've had that effect. If it's the person in the news, then I used to go to school with him. I'll keep that in mind. That's so. um That might actually uh might actually be helpful, to be <laughs> honest. Happy to help. Yeah. And you will hear at the okay. door. Uh, Dr. Renfro, we need you over here. <clears throat> I Okay, uh, the you. nurse out front is going to take you, uh, is going to put you in for an x-ray. Uh, you should be out of here in four to 12 hours, max. Canadian healthcare. Don't worry, uh, I'll, I'll put in a good word for you on the death panel. Hey, it's not not much worse <laughs> in, at home, so no problem. And uh, he'll grab his things, turn, and uh, as he's heading out the door, he'll pause and say... Although, if someone wanted to make a social call, my schedule is I sometimes free. I wouldn't say no. Good do you have know. a card? I do. Do you? <laughs> and uh, he'll pull uh, he'll pull one of his cards out of his pocket, quickly jot a number onto the back of it. Uh, my cell. I do house calls for the right patient. I thought that was uh, gone the way of the dodo. <laughs> you have very good insurance. This is true. I have to go. There's a there's a code blue. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and he'll shut the door, leaving you to wonder what the hell just happened. But there might be information about the guy, so at the very least, might get some might get some some background on him. Kel, Alina's going to have a rather boring next two hours waiting to get in. It's quicker than he said, but it's still a lot of waiting and scrolling on your phone. Uh, she brought her iPad, so yeah, she's okay. at least looking. You know, the time can go to go over any reports or anything that came in overnight. I mean, there's nothing particularly interesting beyond just the general, the general mm -hmm. stuff. Um, you are able to go to um, uh, to a drugstore right next to the clinic. Uh, it's all inside of like um, one of those old Vancouver like multiplex buildings. You know, the ones with the 1980s carpeting that have never been really fixed, and those corridors that the only way that you know what's around the corner is the little signs jutting off with the old like pale mid-colored wood doors mm -hmm. it's every clinic in canada that i've ever been to is are these like nondescript oh. corridors carpet that you know what it's it smells like a tweed jacket and um and looks like a tweed jacket and as you're walking yeah. down it's these like just nondescript doors with rooms of um with rooms of like tiny rows of chairs and uh one of those ticket dispensers 
or alternatively, I, I have the, spent so much time in hospitals. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking or about. Or the unsanitized I, I plastic care. numbers. They never sanitize them. So they're always gross. Oh, they got rid of those, thankfully, after COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in the world of darkness, though. Uh, so, no, no. There's worse things than COVID in World of Darkness. <laughs> so you managed to get through all of that. You managed to get your prescription. It's all covered. It's great. Okay. Um, and uh, you're heading into the parkade to go to your car. Can I get a uh, a wits and composure roll, please? Okay. And do you have any wait, merits? How did, how did that... I drive there? If I'm the... Oh, wait, I would have done that myself. You would have anyhow, driven there. So. It's your character. No, Knowing me, I would have... Uh, do you have the danger sense merit? That would have been smart, wouldn't it? Uh, no, I took oh. eidetic memory, investigative aid, and status. All right, what's a composure, please? Hmm. What's a composure? What's a composure? Well, that's, that's, that's five dice. That's not bad. So let's try that. An extra life dice tray. Okay. Um, uh, one, two, three successes. As you're walking through Just the parkade, it's getting gray outside. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon at this point, going on, going on five, and. As you are making your way toward your car, you can hear the sound of the rain cascading on the other side. You're up on the fifth floor of the parkade. One of those old Robinson's lots. And uh, there's rivulets of rain that are kind of streaking down the support pillars through cracks in the concrete. This place should probably be condemned. Bits of moss are growing on the outside and across on the the broad red brick building on the other side of the parkade. There are big open swaths letting in the, the humid air and breeze. And as you're walking toward your car, you'll hear the sound of a door open. It slides on a track. It's behind you. Someone getting out of a van. I'm gonna and then turn sound... around because I'm not I'm not standing with my back to the sound of a van sliding to open. Okay. <laughs> As you do, a man is going to step around from behind a worker's van. He's tall, very tall, about six foot three. Mm -hmm. Dark skinned, a deep, deep brown. His head is shaved, and he's wearing um, a canvas jacket like a farmer's jacket, with a hoodie beneath mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. He turns and looks over at you. Uh, are you, uh, you're one of the ones that's looking out for, uh, you're one of the ones looking into those murders? I might be. Do you have information about it? Yes. Have you contacted the Vancouver police yourself? He takes some steps forward. He's about 40 feet away from you at this point. That man is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my hand closer to my gun. Because okay. I have a carry permit. <laughs> His voice is accented. Mm-hmm. Okay. That man is evil. He is possessed by evil. He deserves to be put out of his misery. You have seen it, haven't you? He takes another couple steps toward you. I've spoken with him, yes. That is why you are here? Why you are hurt? Injured? That man, he is evil. That is why he let the devil inside of him. 20 feet. What do you know about him? 
about the man I know he's yes. killed I know he has laid waste to many lives the women that he killed some of them were good all of them deserve better I agree you have seen the evil inside of his eyes I've seen evil in many men's eyes Do you believe in God? I believe in the devil. I believe that it is only the goodness of people that separates the world from the devil and anarchy. Are you a good person? Are you on God's side? I sure hope I'm a good person. God has given you a gift. This man does not deserve to live. Perhaps the man can be saved and the <laughs> devil expunged. From the devil. The devil has put his hooks in this man. Because the man let the devil in. He could renounce. No. The devil, the devil is inside of you forever once you let them in. They have forsaken Jesus Christ. They have forsaken God Almighty. He deserves to die. He should die for the souls of those women. He may, but that's not my decision. But it could be. It could be Alina Ekstrom. We both know the higher power has to make that choice. Sometimes the higher power needs an intermediary. I am asking you on behalf of God himself and Jesus Christ and all of the saints Let me help you. I only need a moment with the man. If you are you unwilling to do it. You know I can't allow that to happen. I believe what you say. And I believe your conviction behind your words. But there's a, a process. There's a procedure that we still have to follow. We are beyond that. Do you not look around? I'm... Look around. Do you see this world? Where we are in it? We are in the middle of the long night. Yes, we are. Jesus Christ. I still have to... I still hold a candle. Those of us who hold the candles still have to work for it. Can you do me a favor? Can you please make me? This is good. You're good. It's uh, intense. Please, it's intense. Make me a manipulation and persuasion roll. Okay. You may spend willpower on this. Uh, I'm gonna I think say. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I'm gonna say that this is gonna be penalized by his, uh, by his resolve. So I want you to do this at a minus three. Okay. So if I spend a willpower on this. Uh, you may risk willpower if you'd like. See. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm. Okay. What am I rolling again? I'm. So uh, it's going to be presence. Manipulation. And, uh, me, mani manipulation presence. and persuasion. Manipulation and persuasion. persuasion. Mm -hmm. And if you risk willpower, because I'm going to say oh, that this I is do. directly related to the hunt, even though it's not directly related nope. to dealing with a a monster necessarily. Uh, so, if you're risking willpower, what happens mm -hmm. is you spend a willpower point, and yep. um, you can choose two of the following. You can gain a three dice bonus. You can achieve an exceptional success on three instead of five. You can gain the nine again quality, and uh, mm -hmm. or you can gain a plus one on an attack roll, or um, 
remove 10 again from an opponent. I don't think that those are valid. So mm -hmm. if you're risking willpower, no. you can basically succeed exceptional success on three, or you can gain nine again, which means your nines reroll and your tens reroll. Maybe I'll take the I'll take the exceptional on three. Okay, sounds good. So you're rolling four dice. I'm rolling four dice. Rolling four dice. Let's hope this works. Oh, I mean, I think it's six one half dozen of the other. If I took the the nine again part. Uh, n neither would have helped me. I, I ha my highest is a six. Would you like to dramatically fail this? Oh, I'm already beat the hell up. Yes. Okay. Okay. So add a beat to your sheet. <laughs> I'm already beat up. So beat me again. <laughs> Why not? So he, he looks at you and there is, there is a long moment as he looks at you. Do you hold a candle in the darkness? Yes. You cannot. He pauses and then looks up and you see a tear roll down his cheek. You cannot protect the devil and be on the side of God. And as he says that, he opens his hand and you see a claw hammer <laughs> slide out from his jacket. Make me an initiative roll, please. Okay. Okay. Shit. Good thing I said I was going to put my hand on my gun. You did. You did. Oh, right. Okay. Initiative. What do I roll for initiative again? You roll, it's a, been d you roll a, a d10 minute. and add your initiative modifier. That's right. My initiative, initiative mod. What is my mod? Uh, five. I have a total of 10. Okay. Uh, he has first initiative, unless you have, uh, do you have any fighting styles like firearm or marksmanship? Uh, did I take anything? Uh, it would be a merit if you had it. No. Okay. Uh, maybe take, okay, maybe look I? into that after this episode. Uh, he yeah, is, I'm going to have okay. to. Mm. Okay. okay. So it is going to be this man's turn. Uh, and just to give you an, a, a look, um, I picture this man being um, Lance Hendrickson in my head. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. like he, he kind of looks like Lance Hendrickson. He's got kind of the same yeah. vibe as like the concierge. Mm -hmm. But just mm -hmm. in a, like kind of like a farmer mode, uh, and I met uh, Lance Hendrickson he, once. He's very nice. He yeah, apparently he was a really really lovely man. Um, yeah, he rushes forward at you, dropping the claw hammer into his palm, and says, "I'm sorry." In the name of God, sleep in peace. And uh, he's going to make an attack roll on you. Uh, that is going to be a strength and weaponry roll. Um, and what is your defense? I'm. I'm going to, like, just dive and fall out of the way Fair. as much uh, what as I is, can. So, uh, your defense score mm -hmm. is on your sheet. It is the lower mm -hmm. of your dexterity and wits plus your athletics. Okay. That's wits. Oh, where is my defense score? Uh, my defense score is three. Okay. And what's your dex and wits, the lowest? My dex and wits, uh, they're both two. Okay. So, you have f a defense of five. Five. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm going to spend a Ooh. willpower on this so that I have something. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um, he is going to launch himself toward you. And uh, as he does so, he is going to whiff. You are going to duck and dodge Ooh. out of the way. Your wrapped ribs just giving you enough support, but you're Ugh. going to feel this grinding as oh, your yeah. ribs rub against each I'm... other. He is going to yep. slam the claw hammer into a stone support pillar next to your head, taking out a fist-sized uh. chunk of concrete. It is your turn. I'm I'm going to pull the gun and I'm going to fire. Okay, uh, so you are going to <clears throat> make me a dexterity and firearms roll at a minus four. I even take firearms? I don't think I did. Uh, so you because I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, you can spend your beats on something this episode. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. 
Okay, so you can also spend so... a willpower on this. It's oh, a new sorry, round. I do. Sorry, I do have a dot in firearms. Oh, wow. Good. Woo-hoo. Okay. Good. I have something. So uh, uh, that so is my my dex and firearms. Dex and firearms minus four for his defense okay. because you're at point blank range. Yeah. Um. So, so my, okay. you lost dex, a point of you spent a point of willpower. You, you risked yeah. uh, and you dramatically mm-hmm. failed. Oh, mm-hmm. pardon me. You risked willpower, which means that you yes. don't take a beat. Uh, you automatically dramatically fail if you fail that roll because oh, you risked it. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the downside of that. Um, okay, well, that's fair. Oh, pardon me. Uh, failure, dramatic failure. Uh, you gain two. You you gain two beats for dramatically failing. Never mind. Oh, yay me. Yay you. Um, sorry, we've yay. never had this come up before. Uh, so you have two extra beats on your character because you're going to learn okay. from this mistake. Oh boy, are you. Uh, so oh, yeah. uh, you're down that willpower point, but you can spend another one on this yeah. roll. Okay. So give sure. me dex firearms yeah. plus three. Okay. Can I gain these back at some point? Yeah, by resting or fulfilling your virtue or vice. Okay. Uh, okay. So, okay. So my 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 pool was three. I was at a minus. Minus four. Minus. I was at. Yeah. So I was at three minus four. So I had negative one. Negative one <laughs> plus a willpower, which means it's going to bring you up plus to two dice. Power. Two. Okay. I mean, really, two. You, you got an eight, nine, ten. Woohoo! Please. I got a 10, yeah. And that, that re-rolls. <laughs> See if you get more. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, I got another 10. <laughs> it re-rolls. Ah! And a three. So I have two successes. Okay. Uh, raising the gun, you are going to fire center mass. Uh, oh, he's going to try to yeah. jerk out of the way, but the bullet is going to slam into his ribs, <laughs> uh, and a spray of blood is going to coat the pillar behind him. Uh, your gun does two points of lethal damage on top of whatever mm. you roll, uh, so that is going to be four points of lethal damage. Uh, he is going to lurch back, clutching his side, and is going to, to look down, blood draining from his face, and with the glory of Christ, and is going to take one more swing at you. Uh, he's Christ, going to spend a willpower. Okay. Oh. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, he has a pool of six, minus five. He has four dice with a willpower. Uh, but he's in wound penalties now, because he's a, you know what? He has a name. He's not in wound penalties. There we go. Um, he is going to rear back and is going to slam the claw hammer into the side of your head. There is going to be a resounding crunch as you feel it graze by cutting a little bit of the side of your head. You're going to take two points of bashing damage. Okay. Um, And uh, as it is a glancing blow, and uh, it is your turn. You are still point blank range. What do you do? Again? I'm going to shoot him again. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, same roll. You can spend another willpower. Yeah. Yeah. I'll okay. spend another one. Okay. Oh my God. I got a 10. Oh. And an eight. So I have two. Okay. Uh, he turns, he grazes the side of your head. Blood dribbles mm-hmm. down. You hear this ringing sound as it clips the side of your skull. He raises the hammer over your head, and there's one more path. And he stumbles back against the pillar. Blood burbling out of his lips in these big red bubbles. She's going to grab her phone, call 911, and just say she's, you know, she's in the parkade needs an ambulance emergency she's shot somebody fbi you know give the spiel you know and across town alex as you are looking around for this fugitive you're going to get a cell phone call from silva and he'll answer it <laughs> Landry, Silva, Enstrom was attacked. I need you down at this address now. 
I need you to get her away yep. from any trouble. Make sure she's right, okay. Sure that. I'm texting it now. Get your ass there. He clicks. I am booking it to the closest car I can get in. Sounds good. Driving my uh, way there. <laughs> now, Kel, I need to ask you a question before I switch scenes again. Are you going to try to do medical aid on this man? Yes, I'm okay. uh, going to try and uh, give him aid. At least, you know, tell him she's sorry. <laughs> like, Sure. Make me, uh, Sorry, man. as we as we leave, I want you to make me a wits and medicine roll. Or dex okay. and medicine to try to stabilize him. I... Oh, I don't have any medicine. That's a minus three. You can spend yeah. willpower if you want. Yeah, yeah, I'll spend another one. Why not? Do it. I mean, I'll it's water. It back. Yep, it's water. So, dex, so that gives me two. Oof, only got a seven on that. Okay. Uh, would you like to dramatically fail for a beat? Um, I mean, why not? Okay, so you get I, three I, beats, and wanna... you are going to, uh, you are yeah. going to apply pressure, and he is going to look up at you, his eyes turning glassy, and say, "You have to stop the evil." And he will push a uh, a crucifix into your hand. Or he'll push a cross into your hand. Yeah. Bloody silver. And he will sag onto the pavement. As he does, his blood spreads out across the concrete. And we crossfade to a pair of steaks on a plate. The juices flooding out as a knife slowly cuts into them. Have I ever said how happy I am, Lillian, that you didn't go vegetarian? Your mother did for a while. Mm-hmm. I remember. <laughs> I told her she was going to force me to give up bacon that I would run away. <laughs> mm. We never did play kosher, did we? No. How is it? Fun? It's wonderful. Really. It's wonderful, but I don't want you to go. You're not allowed to do this. You are supposed, you were supposed to live long enough to walk me down the aisle, you asshole. That's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you. I think there's something that you might be able to do. Anything. Whatever. Anything. Name it. It's done. <sighs> now the devil's in the details. This is very advanced cancer. There's nothing that medicine can do. And I was not gifted as you are. You're dealing with someone who is potentially possessed by one of the fallen. Yes. Well, how is your contract law? On, I've been brushing up on it as of late. It is... If you can make a deal with that creature on my behalf, 
who knows what the powers of the Dark Lord can do. There's no reason why that couldn't keep me going for another decade or three or four. What's wrong? We're just that goes against the whole philosophy. It's more We're guidelines, just... really. Yeah, but we're. I mean, I guess if you, by extending your life, help take down more people, of course, well, demons and such, then really it would be a net gain for us, even if we did talk and borrow a little more power. I'm going to let you in on a secret. On your 23rd birthday, when we went to Milan, when you met her, do you really think that the Lucifuge is a hereditary position? That the title of Lucifuge, you think back, Lillian, to your 23rd birthday. It was a nightmare leading up to that. Demon speaking to you in your sleep, the dreams, the blood, the horrible accident surrounding you. And then a trip with your grandfather on your 23rd birthday to Milan to meet the woman known as the Lucifuge. She was elegant, graceful, spoke with a soft, soft Italian accent, but there was something about it that was older, more classic than the Italian men and women that were surrounding you on that trip. You swore your fealty to the Lucifuge on that day. Lucifuge herself has been alive for hundreds of years. I wonder how. What's good for the goose, or what's good for the gander is good for the goose, is it not? Of course. Hmm. You just said Consider anything. it done. Oh, Consider it done. It. We should drink You're to celebrate. We should. Hmm. Tell me about this case. It certainly is a puzzling one. Making it not seem like what it actually is is going to be very tricky. He suddenly, a week ago, completely changed his behavior. Mm -hmm. And then has demonic symbols under his bed. Nothing's mm -hmm. premeditated. And, um, what's the name of the demon? Valak. Valak. Let's see. Do you President know that? of. <laughs> of course. Uh, let's see. Um, President of Hell. A President of Hell. There are many. Um, let's see. Valak. Volak. Uh, Valak. Kulor. Dolos Valach, many names, uh, from the Abrahamic pantheon, a fallen angel. Commands 27 legions of lesser demons and spirits. Um, is the 62nd, 62nd uh, angel listed in Osgoetica. 
and um, also is um, was recently used inside of the um, uh, the Conjuring movies. Oh, the Nun, I believe specifically. I was absolutely blitzed when I watched that, though. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not going to watch a James Wan movie without some cocaine. Look, he's no Stanley Kubrick, but he'd do. No, no, I know. I'm just wondering. Speaking yeah. of which, did you ever see Doctor Sleep? Yes. Remember when you were a child and I took you to that late night rerun showing of The Shining for Halloween? Yeah. You cried for days. It was wonderful. Oh, it was it was scary, okay? As a It kid. was, and you went around riding red rum on the doors for <laughs> weeks after I made fun of you. Oh, I did. You did? Yes, with um uh you stole uh that was when I was when I was um, seeing Hannah, I believe her name was, you stole her lipstick, uh, the model from from um, um, from uh, Ottawa. Uh, you stole her yeah, lipstick and I wrote it I believe everywhere. at that age I even could tell that those tits were not real there. Of course I, not. I paid for it. No, but I, I was eight. And you already had taught me that. I remember. Yes. Well, I, I why do you think I kept her, her around? Like... Because <laughs> I was eight nightly. Let's see. Um, you know, uh... if you do pull the cancer card, I can probably get you a very hot hand nurse. Mm, I could use a hand nurse. You. It's been a few days. You should have seen this, this, this wonderful man. Oh, doctor. He was a doctor and he was helping his brother with his food cart because he was sick. He oh, that old line. It worked on me. Really? What kind of food was it? I don't remember, but the cock was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm happy for you. <laughs> what can I say? I learned from the best. Mm. Mm. And uh, can you make me a wits and composure roll? Oh boy, can I? <laughs> uh, wits and composure. Uh oh, I have only one willpower left. Ooh. Uh, yeah. <sighs> so uh, can I w risk willpower at any? Only when it's related no. to the hunt. Right. Yes. So I let Kel do it because it was her life and death confronting someone about the hunt. That's fair. Ones don't subtract, right? They do not. Sweet! Uh, okay, I'll re-roll that. Ten. Okay. Alright, that's gonna be two successes. Two successes. Um, he's gonna take a drink of water, kind of smiling at you, keeping you locked on his bright eyes. But you are gonna flick your gaze down and see that he's distracting you as he wipes his hand on his napkin. And there is a streak of foamy blood on the napkin. That he coughed into his hand with a little chunk of lung. <clears throat> I'm thinking dessert. How about you? Yes. I hmm. think so. Valak is generally depicted as a, as a cherub riding a two headed griffin if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Hmm. Do you know what would what would be the best way to get 
a deal? What does he want, typically? What does he want? Um, what do they all want? Power, freedom. I mean, generally, he, um... Damnation. Carnage. To make revenge mm -hmm. on the god that cast them out. Well. I'm not gonna let you... I'm not gonna let you... Uh exit this world before your time so I'm going to get you the best damn deal I can <laughs> excuse me do you have anything with bubbles I believe I saw on the menu that you had a 93 please let's celebrate <laughs> I think that is definitely in order. <sighs> also, you jerk. You absolute jerk. You what? buried the lead. You had me thinking you were dying without a cure. That entirely depends on you. Who do you think I am? I think... He reaches out and grabs his glass of wine and holds it up to you. That you are Lillian goddamn Underhill. Do you toast him? I do. And you sip. Ain't that the bloody truth. Hours later. You have a wonderful time, but he does have to get back. He has many affairs that he has to take care of, and some aren't actually affairs. The rain settles in around Vancouver. At around five o'clock, you get a message. It's from Silva. He's requesting you come back to the precinct immediately. <sighs> I'm sorry, fine, I'm going, so uh, well, at least there's a good excuse for why I'm there now, too. Okay. We cut to the back room. Your office space, your mutual shared space. It's six o'clock in the evening. As Lillian pushes through the door. There are three people in this room. Captain Silva, looking every bit like a slightly grayed Benjamin Bratt. His sleeves rolled up around his elbows, looking stern at the end of the table, all of your investigative material and your murder boards clearly in view. Alex, having extricated Alina from the scene. And as you enter, you'll see Alina it's kind of half slumped in her chair, um, a big bandage over the side of her head. The EMTs gave you a look over. You managed to luck out. Barely a concussion. Mild at best. But you should have someone monitor you in your sleep tonight. And Lillian is going to open the door, her coat dripping with a little bit of Vancouver, um, Vancouver sunshine. And, um, I feel like people who watch this stream may say, Kelly, you say it's raining all the time. It can't rain all the time in Vancouver. And I say, you know nothing about Vancouver. It rains nine months you know of the nothing? year. 
It rains the whole freaking time. So you shake off the uh, the liquid sunshine in Vancouver and get a look at this scene. What do you do? Nice of you to join us. Yeah. Yes, Captain. Um, a li- a li- Are you- What happened? I'm- Yeah, I'm- I'm- I'm okay. You have a fucking head wound! Yeah, well, the- It's not as what? bad as the ribs. What did you do? You did not have a head wound the last time I saw you. Yeah, it- it just grazed, just grazed the temple. Just grazed the scalp. It's okay. What? What did I miss? What did I miss? There's, there's other people who are aware of what's, what's going on and what this all means. So you were attacked, is what I'm getting at? Yeah. It wasn't going to start out that way. But there's other... There's other parties that are obviously invested in this and its outcome. On either side. I'm assuming you gave your statement, right? It's being covered. They're out looking... Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, they don't need to look for him. He's dead. (laughs) Yeah. Ms. Ekstrom shot him. We're going to do our best to sweep this under the rug. I'm pulling some strings. I mean... I mean, come I mean, on. It self-defense. was... Self-defense. Yeah. It's still an international incident. Yeah, Canadian it's... permanent resident shot to death by a visiting fed, Silva says. That's a lot. Yeah. Well... What we've got on him right now, permanent resident from Haiti, Francis Arroyo. Hmm. What do you know about him? Well, Associations, religious. Religious for certain. Came over on a worker visa. Worked construction, worked farming. Good history. His church helped to get him his permanent residency. A church? Hmm. Yeah. It's out in Port Coquitlam. Is it very big? I I don't know anything about it. Can't say I've heard of them. Um... I forgot my fucking character's name for a second. I was going to say Elaine. I'm like, that's not my character. Lillian. Uh, <laughs> Lillian is going to whip out her phone and Google Light okay. of Christ. Make me, a, uh, make me an intelligence and computers roll, please, at a plus two. Okay. Actually, at a plus one because their website's real bad. Their SEO is not optimized. <laughs> and intelligence computer. and computer? Yeah. You say? Yep. Okay, I am I am rolling a, a chance die, I guess, then. Okay. Because I do not Hold have that light. skill. Okay. <laughs> Don't break this one. <laughs> do it. I rolled a 9. I have to be a 10, right? It has to be a 10 on a, on a chance Ten. dice. Okay. I got a 9. Oh, so looking at that, you're mm-hmm. immediately going to be routed to a YouTube video that is basically like like flash animation uploaded to YouTube oh, of like, Oh Jesus, will you please bring my father back to life? He is Lazarus and he died. I think I can do that. Oh God. For I oh, am God. the son of. <laughs> exit, exit, exit. Oh fuck. Okay. Their website was built in the stone ages. So I can't seem to find anything except pop up freaking YouTube videos. I didn't know. No, but that makes two churches that seem to be aware of what's going on. We had a priest visit the precinct earlier. A priest of St. Andrews. You remember meeting a priest on your first day on the case. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I remember. <laughs> a priest. Did he happen to say where what church he is from? St. Andrews. It was by the name of Alan Thorne. Make yeah, me I an... met him. Okay. Make me a what? what, what? I, never mind. I was going to ask you to make me a memory roll, but you uh, you got it. Yeah, no, I, I see the notes saying Alan Thorne. Mm-hmm. I, rem- I remember. I know the episodes were a while ago, but I remember. Yeah. I, um... I, I briefly spoke with him. He was here as a spiritual counselor almost with the term of it being demonic possession we do have some priests that come on hand for counseling for anybody who needs it can you check visitors log and and see if he's one of or check your files I'm assuming you have information I'm sure Alex can check the files I'm just here to check in on oversight right now because we have a dead man here. I want to know what your next plan is. Claw hammer. And I'm not saying you were wrong to shoot him, but maybe shoot him not to death next time. I'll remember that the next time somebody puts a claw hammer in my head. A woman who's against a physically more powerful man in in hand-to-hand combat and i will definitely think about how i'm shooting him it's good to know that we have a good defense attorney on this case because you seem to be defending her pretty well look i need to know your next step and i want to make sure there's no trail of bodies leading there because we already have some bad news coming from lockup hicks has been moved to solitary What's that? He ate a man's face. What? Well, well he does claim he's possessed. And how long ago was this? About four hours ago. And mm-hmm. why did no one can tell his defense lawyer? You're being told right now. It took us that long to get him tranquilized. He's got enough horse tranquilizers in him right now. Take out a, 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 I don't know, a horse. So one? Probably a max dose of uh, Halperidol. Thank you. Listen. Can I speak with him? I don't think that's wise at the moment. You're not going to get anything out of him if he's on help her at all. He's I think we need to call in a little bit of extra vegetable. help. I would like to try to speak to my client. You'll speak to him when he's awake, Miss Underhill. That'll be tomorrow and at I... the earliest. He's not going to be I... conscious for until then. And you're going to do it under supervision. Landry, I want you in that room every second, and I want your gun unclipped. Copy that. And Ms. Ekstrom, I don't think that you, Agent Ekstrom, I don't think you're in the right place right now to deal with this. You've got head trauma. You've got at least a mild concussion. I think we should pull in someone else on this to help. Give me a day to recover. 24 hours. You've already got my gun. I'm I'm still the best person you've got for this. She's not wrong. Updating someone on the case and the work that we've uncovered and what she has in her head. Yes. 
And Vasquez is probably going to default to me anyways. Not, not that that's like conversation with him, but just. Can I get both of you? Um, so, Alina, make me a mm -hmm. persuasion plus presence roll. And um, Lillian, make me the same roll, but use Kel's successes as a bonus. Because okay. this is a teamwork okay. roll. Okay. But I feel like the Plus way that you're d doing this, Lillian's taking my points. Striking so looks? Mm -hmm. No. Would apply to? No, okay. No, it wouldn't. Silva doesn't give two shits. You don't care. Also, I think he's gay. But. Um, nice. Ooh, a nine and like, two tens. Stand by. Stand by. Uh, four successes altogether. Okay, that's great. So, Robin, give me presence and persuasion plus four. Sweet. I'm just quickly looking up a uh, a rule for my merit because I'm trying to remember. I've inspiring, so I'm trying to remember what that also does. Inspiring allows you to help people regenerate willpower. Okay, cool. I might need that. <laughs> you yes. might need that. I need so. to regenerate willpower <laughs> myself. I have none. Uh, no, I mean, I got three left. Uh, so my it is presence plus uh, persuasion plus four persuasion plus four okay so plus four is the plus four successes or plus four dice plus four dice okay because you can still fail mm-hmm Oh, thank God I didn't fail. I got one success. <laughs> so he looks you down hard. 11 dice. Just going to say 11 dice, one success. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I heard the 11 dice part. Thought that was awesome. All right. Ekstrom needs someone to look out for her tonight while she's sleeping. I'm charging one of Don't you two with doing babysitter. it. Sitter. You have a concussion. And I can't have you sleeping at the station. I have a mild concussion. You're about to have a mild foot up your ass. One of you look out for her. He's going to be knocked out till tomorrow. We have to push whatever happened to you today under the rug. I want you all take a night I don't want to see or hear from any of you until at least tomorrow right. ideally two days but we don't have time yes Miss Underhill I was saying alright Elena can accompany me to my house I have a spare room I can keep an eye on her We'll have a girl's night. <laughs> sure. I'm, I've I've got a hotel room. You know, whatever. Whatever's easiest. I have a house Enough and a dog. Is... I can't quite leave you alone with my dog. Officer Landry? Oh, um, that's fair. Yes, sir. Ekstrom doesn't have her gun. Nope. And she won't until at least tomorrow. Yeah, actually. You go right. with them. If there's more nut jobs like Arroyo... I know it's a cop's fantasy to see a lawyer get fucked up, but I'd prefer not to lose a team member. I think it's safe yeah, to say that both safe. we're going to see a lot of people coming out of the woodwork on this. Is this acceptable, Miss Underhill? I'm sure that your firm will bill us accordingly. Oh, they will. Don't worry. Good. I'm going to keep this room under lockdown until we figure out what to do with Hicks. Get the fuck out of here and try not to kill anybody on the way home. Well, I can't. You took my gun. Maybe you'll surprise me. You Americans are always I'll enterprising. I'll stop at Home Depot then. We don't sell our guns at Walmart and Home Depot. No, I meant I got a claw hammer. 
Oh. No, I think time. we're gonna stop at some sort of candy store on the way. We're gonna get a movie. We'll rent a movie. We'll relax and at least the dog will let dinner. us know. Yeah. yeah. At least let me order dinner. F yeah, the FBI is paying for that one. Sure. Have you had Vancouver sushi yet? It is amazing. You know, that sounds good. It's been a long time. It's been a long day. That sounds good. Well, Andrew, do you like sushi? Yeah, sounds good to me. Alex, I don't know why I'm being so... It, it's... it's. <sighs> you have quite the presence, Captain. You're making everyone a little nervous. How about you get out? Dismissed. And as you get your things together and head out of the room, you'll hear, Landry. Yes, sir? Enjoy your girls' night. And for the first time, what? you see him smirk. I didn't know he could, his face could do that. I'll just smile and leave. <laughs> Is there anything that where do you where do you live, Alex? Is there anything that you are you close by? Do you want to swing by your house and pick up anything before we go and have a sleepover at my place? No, but I might need my rifle for my vehicle, just in case someone wants to try anything long distance for us. Oh, I love the thought of it. Yep, yep, this is fine. This is fine. I will just let my doorman know that. Keep an eye out for any suspicious activities. You head out. Are you driving, Lillian? Or do you no, I it? Uber. I Uber everywhere. I don't <laughs> drive. Okay, oh, so that's who's... gonna be a bizarre Uber. <laughs> no. So who's driving? Uber is. <laughs> Okay. Well, I guess we could take can drive. Andrew's car. Alex yeah, can drive. Take yeah. Alex's yeah. Car. He's probably got Alex a, is driving, probably it sounds got a like. cop SUV. <laughs> so you take Landry's you car. Can't. Lillian in the front, probably, so Alina can just kind of relax in the back with her head injury. And also giving directions <laughs> from where her house is. There. And as you're headed out with, with orders to go take the night off, Lillian, your pocket vibrates. The pocket of your jacket vibrates. Mm -hmm. so it's a text message phone. from Simon Underhill. In case you need a little bit of aid in your investigation. And there is there's an address there. Sun's Rare Herbs and Traditional Chinese Medicine in Richmond. Yes, I have that note from last game. He gave me a card. Yeah, he gave me a, he gave me the frayed card yes, owner. He did. Yes. So there's a little a little address listed there and the text says, "Don't forget Mr. Sun knows quite a lot." I know I'm supposed to take the night off, but does anyone feel like uh, making a pit stop? What do you have in mind? Sons were herbs and traditional medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine. Good, maybe the they dress. have something for this headache. Might help her through the night. Yes. That is, that is precisely why we're going there. We may also find some other things, too. Ooh. Who knows what we can find in a shop like that. And with that, you drive off into the night to continue your investigation, maybe off the books, which is where we're going to pick up next time on Ooh. Hunter the Vigil Summons. 
so a nice tight episode there. Um, all right, oh, let's take so a look. Fun. That was good. I loved everybody tonight. It's good to get back into this. Um, oh, so yes. let's take a look. So uh, find a lead. So I'm going to go through through aspirations. So uh, mm -hmm. Lillian, you found a lead. I did. Uh, you made peace with your grandfather's death. I did. <laughs> Okay. You did not get in a fight, though. You did not get in a fight. So, Alina, you got, I got a, in the fight. You got a new source, <laughs> yes, did. and I'm going to give you uh, a beat for moving forward in, in discovering the truth. Uh, so then, uh, down to Alex, uh, you are going to get one for dealing with the photographer. And uh, did you? You didn't really look more into leaks or to finding the identity of the killer. We find the identity nope. of the same. Get the, get you got distracted, but it's episode. great. I love that. Uh, so um, <laughs> the first two of you add two beats to your total. Uh, yep. Alex, add one more beat. And then because it has been a while, I'm going to be incredibly generous and give you four beats on top of that. So I think what? Kel, due to your dramatic I failures, got a whole experience. <laughs> you got, I think, you oh, almost right. got two with all your beats actually, because you got two from yeah, your aspirations, yeah. you got two from a yep. dramatic failure, you got one for letting Royo die. So I think you got yep. nine beats total. Holy, Holy dang! Wow. You know, you. I had, I, I almost have another oh, no. experience. I had two slots, uh, two left from last game to get a beat. So I'm gonna have three experience and then now four beats. <laughs> So wow. That's great. Uh, does anybody have any experience uh, that they want to spend? I can. What, what's the page with all the experience yeah. charts again? Because yeah. I forget what things cost. Uh, totally. So uh, um, it's something. actually. I think it's at the bottom of the sheet. Actually. Is it? Oh, you're right. I think you're right. Hold up. Because oh, uh, Mr. Gone makes these sheets, yeah. and he's amazing. Uh, skills are two, specialties are one, yeah. merits are one, and attributes are four, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh. Where do you see that on the sheet? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was at the very bottom, but I could be wrong. No, you know it has mean. the starting stuff where it's oh, like you stuff. get Mr. three, Gaunt's four, still three. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, it gives like how to calculate the beginning of your sheet because mm -hmm. it has all the stuff for yeah. starting yeah. integrity and shit like that. Like it, it's great, yeah. but uh, so all so just... other stuff. So it's on page Let's 76 up, of um, 76 of the core book. Of the core, okay. And uh, that is uh, attributes are four, merits are one, specialties are one, skills are two, and your integrity is two per dot. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so, and I'm giving you a ton of beats, but... Um, oh, and uh, can you do me a favor at the end of this, Kel? Can mm. you please, we're going to make you roll me a breaking point roll. Ooh, uh, so do. you killed in self-defense. So yeah. this is a, so that's a plus one minus. What is your integrity right now? My integrity is currently seven. Seven. Okay, so mm -hmm. you are going to make me a. Uh, you are going to. Let's double check. Du -du -du. You're gonna make a resolve and composure roll with a uh, minus two to it. Okay. Uh, or so probably that's... a minus minus three. It's a minus three because it is murder. Okay. Well, it's self defense. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So that's three in the pool. So I'm gonna buy um, with with one point. Oh, one sec, uh, real quick. Uh, what What are your What's your virtue? My virtue. Virtue. Top of the sheet. Virtue is sloth. <laughs> no, your virtue. Oh, that's sorry. Your... My virtue. Uh, loyalty. Uh, okay. So that will virtue. not apply to this. Okay. Did you get any successes? I did. I got two. I have two okay. nines. So you might feel guilty or upset, but you can cope. Um, you are going yeah. to choose one of the following conditions. Uh, guilty, okay. shaken, or spooked to have next episode. Uh, I'm going to say shaken. Okay. So um, you can look up the condition yourself, but I'll just quickly tell you what it does. Uh, so the okay. way that shaken works 
is uh, something has frightened you extensively. Anytime you are taking an action where fear might hinder you, you can opt to fail the roll to shed this condition. Okay. Um, this condition can be imposed by a successful breaking point roll. Uh, if you resolve the condition, you gain a beat. Okay. That's basically it. So you are shaken. Sure. Uh, you will. It's yeah. a role playing guide yeah. more than anything. But uh, when you shake it off. But when you when you hesitate and fail because of your fear, you get a beat. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I like nice. that mechanic. All right. Uh, Robin, yeah, you have a question? No, it works well. Uh, not, not, well, yeah, a question. Um, so I want to, uh, so I was looking at, I'm going to buy a, a dot in computers, um, to be able to just use my freaking phone, uh, mm. to look things up. <laughs> uh, and then I wanted to, I have, um, three dots in subterfuge. I was going to buy a specialty in subterfuge. Please do. Um, and I want to know what would be best for like <laughs> trying to, trying to like casually, without my other potential teammates knowing I'm trying to uh, lie and make a contract with a demon. Uh, so there are tons noticing. of them. I suggest uh, my go-to place uh, is looking up specialties on Codex of Darkness. Oh, ooh, what's that? So it mm. is a website for World of Darkness stuff. I would check the first edition ones. And this, if you're playing Chronicles of Darkness yeah. games, uh, it doesn't matter because it's just a list of specialties. Go click on that. It, they've got like mm -hmm. 40 or 50 different specialties for each one listed. Mm. Mm. And I've used this for oh. years. It's wonderful. So just do a search of the skill, scroll down, and there's, you know... Um, act big, act normal, alter ego, bald lie, be whoever they want you to be, blaming others, boasting, bureaucratic expediency, careful omissions, con jobs, etc. There are so many specialties on that list. Okay, code of so codex of darkness. Did and you then click I the link I sent? In oh, you clicked the link. Oh no, I, I didn't. I, I, I sent you a link. Oh, thank okay. you. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I bookmarked it now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. That. The, um, I've had it bookmarked for a while. Yeah, the second edition version isn't as good as the first edition version, because but they're entirely Ooh. compatible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go check that out. Codex of Darkness dot com slash wiki slash specialties first edition is what you want. Oh, um, shit. Google There's it. There's a ton. There's a ton, and they're all great, and they're only one XP a piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, right. Ooh, and doing a contract. Ooh. You could get another one in uh, persuasion, negotiation. Yeah, which you should probably I have, already have. I have no. I have turning jury in my persuasion, but I could get okay. negotiation as well, which is good. So I might do that. So I'll do good. that, and then, and then I think I'm gonna get. Uh, Anybody else spending anything while uh, Robin's looking at that? Yeah, uh, I I'm think gonna I'm gonna spend four points and get firearms. one point. Of I'm going to buy one point of composure. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. That will also raise your willpower score. Do I get another willpower on top of that right away or you, just? Yep. Sweet. So raise your composure. And um, can you uh, also double check? I believe it affects your initiative score. Oh. I believe your initiative score is uh, wits and composure or dex and composure. Dex and oh, it does. Yeah, so your initiative will go up by one as well. Um, and Kelly, Sweet. you wanted to buy a dot of firearms. That sounds great. Yeah, I've already got one, but I'll, I'll take a, I'll take another. Yeah, one. you, you had some live fire ex expertise now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, hey, folks, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Uh, this was originally broadcast on our Patreon before it was broadcast anywhere else. If you like our Chronicles of Darkness games and you want to see more of them, Patreon's a great place to do it. And a big thank you to all the Patreon supporters who helped Dork Tales happen because, hey, this is a full time gig. Uh, the, we're recording this on one of my nights off because we love this game and we love giving you extra stuff. Uh, so consider joining the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. You could get this like three to six months before everybody else. It's 
ridiculous. Um, you can join the likes of my mom, who is great. Uh, she's our divine producer, uh, as well as our demonic producer. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Bracarius. Bracarius is really the one to blame for all of this, I'm sure. Uh, Valak is working for Bracarius. That's the big twist. Um, oh. as, all right. Uh, our Wizards of the Patreon, which are growing by the day. We have a council of four now. Uh, a big thank you to Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin, Sorcerer Sanguine, and Kelowna Curd. And, of course, our High Council of the Patreon, Taryn, Dustin, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Chef Aladeth, LaRouk, and Mike Baxter. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for all of your support and love. And uh, we'll see you next time on Hunter the Vigil Summons. Goodbye. Dun-dun! <laughs>